I'm Lucy. I'm a third year of physics with medical physics student. So I went to school in Buckingham, which is a little town in the north of Buckinghamshire. And yeah, I've grown up in a village all my life. So it's kind of been an adjustment moving to Nottingham, or it was at the start at least. For A-levels, I did maths, chemistry, physics and French. And I'm the sort of person who likes to keep pretty busy. So yeah, I always had a lot of different activities going on when I was growing up. And I really enjoy sport and creative things. I'd like to think I'm quite a motivated person in general, but I think storytelling is kind of a key theme. So whether it's my podcast which I kind of produce weekly episodes for that's something that I really enjoy and it's been a really cool project to work on I started it in the pandemic and since then it's kind of yeah just become more and more part of my routine and things that I like doing so I kind of interview different people and try to get their experiences um writing as well as something that I really enjoy which sounds a bit odd because I'm a physics student so I definitely enjoy that science side as well but yeah the creative storytelling is something I have really found a passion for in recent years. I think I've always wanted to go to uni. It was never really a choice of whether to go to uni or not for me. It was more just that was the path that I saw myself going down and then was trying to work out what to study and where to go. So I think having lots of family members who've been to uni has probably pushed me in that direction maybe, but I'm definitely very academic minded and I really like learning and pushing myself in that way and just learning new things about the world so that was kind of my motivation for physics was trying to understand how things work and I really enjoy breaking that down with the maths. Um, Nottingham because I think I just kind of fell in love with the campus. I love just walking around on campus and it makes me really inspired being in such a green space. I think that the community when I came on the open days and the off holiday days that sense of community really kind of came through to me. So I definitely felt at home right from the start and both my parents actually came to uni here. So that was probably um, a helping factor um, to some extent, but I think it was a decision I made myself and was something that I, was just a place I could really imagine myself living and being happy. I think when I came, I expected to make friends immediately that would be my best friends and, Although I have been really lucky and I did make some friends that I'm still really good friends with now, I think it was a definitely a process to getting there and you have to build up those friendships over time. So that was something that was a little bit different to what I expected. I think you see a lot of media and ideas of what uni is like, that you're always happy and you're always just having fun with friends and you do a bit of work and that sort of thing. But I think I've realised that you can kind of do whatever you want and it doesn't necessarily have to be a certain idea of uni. You can you can make it whatever you want it to be. Um, but yeah, I think the friends one was a big difference to what I expected, but kind of for the better because growing those friendships over time makes you appreciate them more and makes you, like you appreciate how strong they are because you've seen it build up. So I think when I first had my medical physics lectures in first year, I realized that there was this whole other kind of field of physics that was really interesting to me. So I remember being really interested in that. And throughout the lockdown, they actually put on quite a few guest speaker lectures, which I really enjoyed going to just to open my eyes to all of the different aspects of physics because it is such a broad subject. So yeah, in lockdown, there was this talk that they put on and they had two guest speakers who were in science communication. So one of them was Nick Booth and the other was Izzy Clark. And I've recently or since been in contact with both of the both of them and they've given me some really useful and insightful comments about their career and all of the different things that are available once you leave uni. Because again, I kind of thought that physics was a good degree to do to get me a scientific career maybe later down the line. But I've really realized from those sorts of talks that there's so many, so many different aspects and things that you can do after. Um, so yeah, speaking to Izzy Clark has been really insightful. Halls was really fun. I really enjoyed being around loads of people all the time, which was kind of unexpected because I would say I'm an introvert. So I was kind of a little bit apprehensive, but mostly excited about moving into halls. But I, yeah, I just really enjoyed it. And I was in Willoughby Hall in first year. So it's a catered hall and you have really long tables where you can eat dinner with lots of different people. I think that was helpful for 
making friends because you weren't necessarily stuck with the immediate people that you were surrounded by in your accommodation. You could mix and try and make sure you're with the right people. So I enjoyed that. Um, our Christmas formal was definitely a highlight for me. We went to, I think it was the hockey club, um, the other side of the lake. And it was a really, really fun night. They had a lot of really cool entertainment, dances and dodgems and kind of like some poker things going on and entertainers. It was it was a really fun night. And I think although my first year was cut short because of COVID, like that was definitely a memory that sticks out to me. My favourite thing to do is play corkball. I love our corkball club. It's so much fun. I've met some amazing people through that club. We... Yeah, we train like twice a week and it's really cool getting to use the facilities in David Ross. Um, and my favourite place on campus is probably Millennium Gardens. It's quite underrated. Not many people know it exists. But for example, the other day I had a gap in my lunch break and I just went and sat outside when it was really sunny. And it's such a peaceful spot on campus. You can't really see any of the other buildings. You feel quite secluded. And I really appreciate that because there's often a lot of different things going on, but it's a place that you can go to to just have a breather and chill out for a bit. And it's really beautiful. Um, I really enjoy kind of just going into town and exploring. Like, even though I've been here for three years now almost, there's still so many areas that I can still explore and discover. Uh, I really enjoy looking around the charity shops and all of the cute little side streets that you can find. I think Nottingham's a great city because it's big enough that there's still loads of things to find, but also it's small enough that you feel like you know your way around really well and feels quite safe. So I, I like that mix. My favourite cafe is a little one on Pelham Street called the Fox Cafe. It's really cute and it feels very autumnal. So you go in and they've got all the kind of leaves on the walls and lots of little red foxes around. The food is amazing there as well. Um, loads of different choices and options and then my favorite restaurant is 31k i recently went there with one of my best friends and she'd been before but it was the first time that i went and the staff in there were so lovely they were really welcoming and i feel like that's quite rare nowadays <laughs> often they're quite i don't know just stressed and tired so which is fair enough but in there in 31k they had some really cool uh, different food options and it's a really really nice evening. Willerton Park as well I really love it there there's wild deer roaming around and the big lake and the manor house and it's right next to campus as well so in first year me and my friends from halls used to just literally cross over the road and go and spend Sunday afternoons there and I think it's it's nice having such a big open space to go that's free um, it's really good for students. I think the independence I love having independence and I really appreciate that coming from such a small little village where you have to drive literally everywhere to get where you want to go so I love being able to just walk onto campus and plan out my day however I like it's also so much fun living with my friends and I think living with like-minded people and living with people that you get along with so well just helps you kind of grow your own confidence and feel really good in your day-to-day Obviously there's ups and downs, but I think living with friends is a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, I think independence is the main one. I, I love that here. I think the sense of community is really important to me and having met so many different people from lots of different societies and things that I'm involved with, I think it's just amazing how many opportunities there are. And it might be the same at other unis, but it just seems like such a friendly space. And I, I love campus, I think it's it's great for your mental health because there's loads of green spaces and I do just really appreciate that I'm definitely an outdoorsy kind of person so you have a good mix of more urban city life and also the rural side all combined which works well for me I really love the variety of modules again I think there's so much choice and studying physics has made me realize even more how many different avenues there are that you can learn about and I love that there is I love that the lecturers are all doing the research currently and each year they'll kind of bring in new material and things that they've actually been working on which is really cool and I think the higher up I get through my degree the more I appreciate that because that's really rare and that's really exciting 
so yeah having access to their insight is really important to me and yeah I like the I just like the course in general <laughs> so yeah in particular the careers department has really supported me and has really opened my eyes to the range of things that I can do in particular our careers advisor Olga Fernholz has been amazing she is the most dedicated person that I know within physics I think she just always emails you with a load of different ideas and I've had a conversation with her once and she suddenly knows all of the different possible career options that I would like to do and she'll send me internships and advice and that sort of thing and that's been really valuable I think especially during the pandemic I appreciated that a lot because you don't get as much interaction if any so having those personalized emails and things like that that made you realize that they actually cared about you as an individual was really special and yeah I think in general I do feel supported by the uni it's nice having your personal tutor that you can reach out to I think that it's been a tough few years and it's nice being back in person now because I think you realize that there is support there even if it doesn't come across online as much but yeah face to face it's it's really good and I do feel supported I think interviewing people on my podcast has been really inspiring and just listening to other people's experiences and realizing that everyone is kind of going through the same things just different versions of it and different experiences but the same emotions that's been actually really inspiring just knowing that people are on the same page as you so I spoke to a PhD student who's actually studying here and he did his undergrad in physics as well and he kind of gave me a lot of really useful insights into careers so he's in his late 20s now and he spoke about the idea of career trees versus career ladders and this was a completely new idea to me even though it is quite intuitive so you have the traditional idea of a career ladder where you're just moving up each step and you're getting promoted and you move to the next level and you tend to stay within the same company maybe and then he had this other way of looking at it where you're more, more open-minded and you can flip between different ideas and just because you've gone down one route doesn't mean you can't backtrack and go down another one and I think that was useful for kind of taking the pressure off and being more open to just making decisions and if it's not right you can change your mind later on and that's fine and that is kind of normal and everyone does that because I think when you're when you have everything ahead of you you think oh I've got to make the right decision now otherwise later down the line it's going to all snowball but you can you can change your mind essentially that's what he said so I actually got involved with a lot more things than I anticipated before going to uni which has been great and I love that you can just get involved with whatever you want so Corfball is probably my main society and I've been on committee for that last year and I'm going to be on committee again next year and it's just such a lovely group of people and it's a sport that I really love playing so that's been a big part of my uni experience. So my role on committee for Corfball last year has been community outreach officer and what that involves is organising our sports and schools programme. So we go into local primary schools and we teach them how to play Corfball. Often they've never come across it before. Most people have never heard of Corfball until they come to uni. So that was really fun and I love working with kids. I think they've got so much energy and that just kind of transfers onto you. So yeah, we coached them and gave them like a six week block of sessions. And it's kind of just nice getting into the local community. You can definitely get trapped in the uni bubble. And it was nice just like branching out and trying something new. Um, also photography society. I, I've always loved photography and I think it's nice having other people who are also creative to, to see what they're up to. And we go on photography walks and seeing the same things in front of you but everyone captures it in a slightly different way and that's quite that's quite cool I'm also part of Impact Magazine so Impact Magazine has helped me meet a lot of other people who also have a passion for writing and I kind of thought that you had to have some kind of qualification to write an article or you had to be really experienced and professional and you, you just don't and I think uh, there's a lot of there's almost a lot of pressure to write something amazing, but the more you write, the more you realize that you can just put something out there and try again next time if it doesn't work. 
and it's been a really a really cool publication to be involved with it's a very professional publication and recently the print edition came out and I had an article in there that I co-wrote with another girl from Impact and yeah it was on kind of how to choose hope in the face of climate change and I spoke to a load of climate climate scientists about their experiences and how they were feeling about the impending doom of the planet basically (laughs) so that was actually a really also inspiring Thing to be a part of and it's it's cool seeing a physical copy of your work because often it's all online and especially with your degree it's kind of just a number on a page but seeing something you've actually made is quite satisfying I think I've really come out of my shell and I tended to think that being confident meant you were arrogant or cocky or really full of yourself and through just like developing my confidence and slowly pushing myself more and more I've kind of found that that's actually a really empowering thing and by being confident you can also inspire other people to be more confident and that's just a win-win situation really and I think as long as you have self-awareness and you're not you're not being full of yourself (laughs) then having a bit of confidence in what you can do is always a good thing. Communication is probably the most important skill I used to be very, very shy and still am to an extent in certain situations. But the ability to communicate has helped me communicate with myself and with other people. And then everyone just understands the situation more if you're communicating it. I think through writing for Impact Magazine, that's really helped me develop my communication skills through writing. Doing my podcast has helped me learn how to communicate my ideas to people who hopefully can get on board with them and on my course we've also had to give presentations as part of our communication skills module so that's been yeah it's just progressively like pushing myself out of my comfort zone to do things that are scary and to communicate how I feel and what my ideas are. I think the hardest part of uni for me is juggling everything and I'm the sort of person who likes taking on a lot of different things because I do just enjoy a lot of different things but making sure that I'm managing my time well is a skill that I've had to develop it's very easy to get very focused on my course and especially in A-levels I used to be like that and I would just be very kind of like blinkers on focus only on academics but I've kind of realized that there's other things to life as well and I still do value my course a lot but letting myself explore other options has been a good thing that I've done even though it has been challenging to balance with all of the different areas. I think the main thing is focus and that doesn't necessarily mean being kind of sat at your desk for hours on end but to me that just means if I am working I've got the intention that I'm going to be doing some focused work now and if I'm having fun like doing other activities then I have to let myself enjoy those as well because Otherwise, I'd always be thinking, oh, I should have done more work while I'm trying to play sport or, oh, I should be having, I shouldn't be so hard on myself like when I'm actually working and that sort of thing. And it's been important to realise that I need to just focus on one thing at a time. And it's more of like a mindset than a practical practical tool, I guess. Um, Although things like Google Calendar and Notion have been helpful to practically kind of see it on a page um I think just talking to friends as well it's really simple but it helps so much and just kind of de-stressing at the end of the day talking to your friends and your housemates about what they've been up to and not being so self-centered on everything that you're doing and having an appreciation for other things that are going on in their lives as well and making sure you're being a good friend to them and that sort of thing so Yeah, just like, this can be as simple as just chats while you're having dinner, really, is helpful. I have a lot of ideas, (laughs) you can probably sense a theme. I would love to go into a career in science communication. That's my current idea. I think that it would be really cool to share research with a wider audience and through speaking to professors like Professor Moriarty, he is an amazing communicator and has really kind of 
so in lockdown, I was doing one of his modules and he kind of made this whole video series on YouTube. And it was a really kind of novel way of presenting the information other than just PowerPoint slides and people kind of reading it out. And I think there's so much scope for exploring that more and for developing new ways to communicate ideas, especially within science, because I'm really passionate about climate change. And I think that it's going to be a huge issue. It already is, but it's going to be something we need to communicate. And I'd love to work on that in a future career. Not sure what exactly that will look like yet, but we'll see. Um, I'd love to travel as well is a big thing for me. I'm glad that I've got another year in Nottingham but after that I'd love to just go exploring and see what's out there and kind of broaden my horizons a little bit more. I think it would just prove to myself that I've stuck at something for four years of my life and that all of the hard work that I've put in has paid off and it'll be cool graduating alongside my friends and having that experience together I imagine that I'll get a photo outside Trent building and it'll probably go on my Nana's wall in a, in a um, hallway. <laughs> I think that it will just, yeah, be a good marker of this stage of my life and a good recognition of that. I would really just like to continue connecting with people and however that might be. And I'd like to connect with a lot of people and to make people realise that they can do whatever they want as well which I don't know what that would look like but that would be kind of a, a key value that I'd like it to hold I would really love to travel and one of my big dreams is to live in a lot of different countries I'd really like to live in France or somewhere that speaks French and to become fluent in that language I'd love to lean more into creativity and just kind of be unapologetic and free to do whatever I want in that way and not hold myself back by what other people think and whether it's the right thing to do or whether it's like a viable career option just yeah being more creative and exploring how to communicate ideas and connect with people would be a, something that I'd like to do